Okay, guys. Um, so this is just uh, finishing up the chapter on um, social perception. And so we uh, covered um, <clears throat> all the way up to uh, pretty much the last few slides. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to finish out this chapter. Um, and so uh, I have here this slide up about the two-step process of attributions. So um, one, one major uh, issue when it comes to social perception is this idea that um, <clears throat> there are a, our idea of making attributions of figuring out what causes people to behave a, cer a certain way, we usually engage in at least the first step. And it only takes a conscious effort um, for us to slow down, for us to, to get to the second um, step. So when we first view people, we tend to look directly at them and make an internal attribution. So we assume that what, whatever reason the person behaved the way that they did was because that's the way that that person is. So, you know, that that's a particular trait that the person has. Um, we assume that it was something uh, about that person that is the reason why they did that thing. Um, this is this kind of, of, of first step really relies on that automatic thinking. Um, if we're in a situation where you know a car jumps out in front of us and we go, "Oh my goodness, that person's such a jerk," um, you know that's something that tends to come very quickly, and and many many times we actually don't further engage in any thought of other than that the person is a jerk or they did that because they're selfish or um, you know whatever the reason. So our first step is almost always making an internal attribution about about a particular behavior so you know they behave that way because that's who they are um, because it's such a quick and spontaneous thing um, we will engage in the second step <clears throat> which means that we will consider the situation only if we have time only if we have time to sit and think about it. if we slow down and think carefully before making a judgment um, or if we're motivated to actually reach an accurate judgment, um, or if we're suspicious. So if we are motivated to think further, we want to know more about the person or more about the situation, then we'll go into an, that second step. Or if we really suspect that there's something's going on. So if there is, for example, suspected lying, then we will tend to look at, um, at the situational factors. So, um, there, there is a chance that we engage in the second step of thinking where we, you know, where we're on the right track, but then we don't quite go through that. Um, and that, that, that can happen. Um, but what it does require is our ability to focus attention on that particular person. It, 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 it means that we have to not just stop at our first quick judgment and we have to actually engage in, in, in conscious thought. So um, the next slide here is um, having trouble with my slides. It's not showing. Um, I think my, there we go. Okay, so the next slide that you should see is just sort of a cartoon. And what this is essentially is <clears throat> if you are going in step one or step two, if you stop at step one and what attribution you, you, come, you conclude, and then if not, going to, towards step two. So <clears throat> this behavior is you're sitting in class and a professor asks a question and there's a particular student who gets the answer wrong. Um, so if, you're, if you engage in the first step, you may automatically assume that there's an internal attribution that, oh, that person's dumb, or they're not you know, paying attention, or they're a bad student. And so if you, if you were tired or distracted, or if you just don't care, then you may end at that first internal attribution, that first step, and you're done. Um, if you are curious, uh, if you're motivated to know a little bit more, if you have the energy, the time, the motivation to think a little bit more, then you'll get to step two. And then you may say, well, you know, that was a tough question or that person didn't really seem to be paying attention. They kind of caught them off guard. Um, the professor is kind of bullying them or something like that. And then you engage in that step two. Then you can adjust that initial attribution that, that, that you had at step one. Oh, they're dumb. 
right? And then might say, okay, well, you know, perhaps that that isn't the reason why they behaved in that particular way. And this idea is just remember, again, you, you engage in step one because it's a very quick, automatic way to reason why people behave the way that they do. It's, it's, it's easy to just say it's because of whatever trait they had. And then step two, you will only engage in that if you have the time and the energy and the motivation to do so. But a lot of times we stop at state, step one simply because we just don't care. Um, if you're tired and if you're sitting in class, you're like, ah, that person's dumb. Oh, well, end of story. Um, but engaging in this more thoughtful thinking, what that does is it allows us to really get at a person's real true behavior, why they do the things that they do. It could be the person is dumb or not paying attention or, you know, whatever, but to at least allow ourselves to engage in the situational thinking. Um, maybe wait again and see if there is another question that's asked and see if the student answers the question wrong again. Um, and just putting more thought into it. So this is a, a part of, act, uh, of, of figuring out what the person is thinking, what, why the person did the behavior that they did and figuring that out through, uh, in, this, in this case, step two of more conscious thought. Now, this is just a picture to kind of uh, talk a little bit to what we talked earlier in class about this idea of holistic versus analytic thinking style. So I used the picture before of an airplane and had you guys look at the differences between the two, compare the, the airplane pictures. And so uh, many of you, you know, picked up on some of the big, um, some of the differences between, for example, plane to plane. But remember we talked about holistic um, style of thinking being big picture, being um, the planes in reference to each other, uh, being the, uh, the, the, the items in reference to each other in the, uh, on the picture and the big sort of global aspect of those pictures. And so when we give a, a person who is a more of a holistic style thinker um, those kinds of pictures, they're much easier to pick up on the whole picture. Um, they're more interested in looking at the person or object and the relationships between people over, um, you know, some of these little tiny details. These just, this is a more Eastern style of thinking. Um, and it's not that people in, in, in what we call collectivist cultures, um, where the family is um, very, uh, very important. Now, these collectivist uh, cultures, for example, in Japan, this picture here shows a Japan um, city, uh, inner, like a, a, a big city in Japan, um, you know, we're looking at those individuals who win in collectivist uh, cultures tend to look at the situational information much more than a person in an individualistic culture. So remember, we talked about this analytic style, looking at the details um, associated with Western culture, and it's more focused on objects or people themselves. So it's focused on looking at the traits. Um, whereas collectivist cultures look at the whole picture, they look at the situation, look at all the factors there. So the interesting thing is that um, uh, that many people from collectivist cultures tend to not make uh, that mistake of, of staying at step one. Um, they tend to look at situational facts to, to try to explain attributions, whereas in, in individualistic and Western cultures, we tend to um, look more at the traits of the person. Why is it that the person did the thing? Oh, it's because they're a jerk or because they're mean or because they're selfish. Whereas in people in Japan might say, well, what was going on? Why did they act the way they did? What situation was, was, uh, was, was happening? Um, so even though we see that, you know, collectivist cultures tend to do analytic thinking and, um, and uh, Eastern cultures tend to do holistic thinking. It doesn't mean that either one can't engage in both types of thinking. It's just what we see typically happen first on that sort of the first instinct. Now, another thing that I wanna uh, talk briefly about is this idea of a self-serving attribution. And so this is when we mess up, uh, we fail a test, or we uh, say something we shouldn't have, or we do some, we, you know, we've done something we shouldn't have done. We tend to do, uh, we tend to make these attributions that are self-serving. So we may say, for example, that um, we failed the test because we were tired, or because it was just too hard, the professor's really hard, or um, you know, it's something to do with this situation. We we tend to explain our failures um, because of the of the situation. You know, oh, I couldn't concentrate because there was something going on outside and I failed that test, or you know, something like that. Instead of saying, oh, I'm stupid, we tend to say, 
that there's a situ there's a, it was a situational factor. And then we blame our successes uh, or explain our successes on something internal or dispositional. We say, oh, well, I won that game because I'm a really good athlete. Oh, I lost that game because uh, they didn't call it well. Uh, and so you can have the same sort of situation, but it's self-serving. Uh, and so we do that mostly because we want to maintain our self-esteem. We want to feel good about ourselves. We want other people to, to uh, think well of us, admire us. Um, we want to get along with people and we want them to, uh, to value us. And so we tend to do these self-serving attributions to make ourselves feel better. So again, blaming those, those losses on external factors and then explaining the wins, the, the successes on something internal. And so we know more about situational factors that are affect our that affect our own behavior compared to other people. We can't always predict how other people are going to react to their own situation, and we don't know all those details. Even friends that you have, you, you don't know exactly what's going on in their life, so you don't know all their situational factors. So we tend to um, to uh, blame uh, behaviors on on several different things for other people, uh, their traits perhaps, but we don't tend to not make the same mistake. Um, in terms of, of blaming behaviors on ourselves. Another thing that we can do is uh, uh, we can, we can um, realize that there are biases in, um, in attributions that you know, we can be more weighted to think one way or another. Um, but what, what we end up doing is we say, oh, well, you know, I, I don't tend to have the, those issues, um, but other people are pretty susceptible um, to to making these these uh, incorrect attributions about people and what we call this is a, a bias blind spot and so we think that other people um, are are able to um, are, are more susceptible to these kinds of biases um, so if if you take a moment and this is a really interesting exercise and so I mean if you are if you like to watch sports this is fun to watch um, what what you'll notice is, is that if there's a team that's a, that's more of a solo team or a partnership versus a sports team, um, what you find is that there are differences in how a person talks about a win or loss. If you look at athlete stars, uh, people who are very, very, very top of their game, top of their, uh, in, in their sport, they actually talk differently about a, a win and a loss than somebody who is um, less talented. Um, we look at, for example, um, you know, people saying uh, that there are internal, so blaming internal attributions or explaining internal attributions for um, how well they did. Oh, we had excellent teamwork. Um, our defensive line really did their job today. Um, my serve was totally on. Um, and then when you look at these external attributions, you, you'll hear an athlete say something like, oh, if they've lost all these injuries, we've had this season really hurt us or that line judgment call uh, that line judge made every call against me. Um, and you see that they tend to blame um, these external factors for their losses. And then for the, for the uh, wins, they blame these internal uh, characteristics. Like I'm such a great athlete. Um, so this is just kind of an overview of some of the basic um, concepts that uh, we have at the end of social perception. This last slide is a good slide for you to kind of review and see uh, just an outline of what we covered um, for the whole chapter. So we'll get started on the next chapter, next class of so chapter five. Um, and um, I will see you guys in class.